after the session will com uh, complete, I will have that recording also there uploaded in the same Dropbox folder. So I request you to copy and paste that Dropbox link uh, in uh, your uh, notepad or some, some text editor so that you can refer that link later on for downloading recording also. I will I will share the email also for that link, no worries. Okay, uh, see ya. Let me show my screen. Let me check my windows. If any window is there, let me close that. Okay, that's good. Now let's see, uh, sharing my entire desktop. You should see that in a while. Hmm. Now you can you can uh, move this uh, video window. You know uh, you will have that option when you move that mouse, your mouse on that video window. You will see the icon that that icon is called as dock. You just click on that dock icon, and that video will get adjusted at the at the right hand panel. So that will help you to see my entire desktop very well. And if you uh, if you don't want to see that video or if you don't want to look in the chart window, you can hide this entire uh, right hand panel also. Just click on this arrow, and this right hand arrow will hide that uh, that uh, chart window also. And that will that will uh, make your my screen what I'm sharing that my screen full screen with you. Okay, I'm keeping this uh, window open here because I want to look for the chat messages. I'm having another laptop in front of you, uh, in front of me, and I will see the messages there directly in that chat window. Uh, you know, whatever you will type, I will see that. Uh, I already have given you the uh, voice access permission there. You can see there on my video icon what you will see there on your screen. You know, you will see the red, red microphone and uh, that camera icon just click on that microphone icon to mute or unmute yourself by default you are on mute mode everyone is on the mute mode but you can go and unmute yourself and you can directly talk with me in the live training you can ask me the question uh, through this vivo ip facility what the click meeting is providing click meeting is awesome service we are using this for many years and you can directly interact with me you can ask me the questions and if you if you have the fear in mind for the english language you can ask me the question in marathi also in hindi also i can understand that language i can give you that uh, that answer in that language and uh, i will translate that answer in english also for other guys but i request you to ask me the questions when you will ask me then i can understand you are getting that point there okay so this is the subject networking essentials earlier time we are running this subject with a with a server essentials combined together now we split it these two topics server essentials will be a different training networking essentials will be a different training both trainings are uh, get considered as a core it technologies here in certification guru so we are offering this uh, both the trainings free of cost other trainings also what uh, what is having that title essentials training we are offering that training free of cost uh, monthly or after every one or two months, we run that uh, free webinars to get that training uh, completed. You know that will that will uh, help you to understand that subject very well. Now this is the networking uh, topic, and uh, you know in this networking training, we need to cover uh, what is networking from that point. What is LAN? What is WAN? We will discuss that, and then yes, and then. We will see the networking devices, media, networking standard, networking uh, networking models, OSI model, TCP IP model, different layers. We need to understand the difference between TCP and UDP model, uh, UDP protocol. We need to understand. We need to understand the ports, what ports are there and how, how many ports are there. We will see that. And then we will think about the uh, TCP IP uh, addressing. We will see the IP addresses. We will see the classes and we will see the private and public IP addresses also. Then we will see some basic commands there for network troubleshooting. And then we will conclude this uh, by going on that topic uh, that is the workgroup and domain network environment. We will see that what is the difference between this workgroup and domain. We will see that there. Okay. Now let's directly go on the subject. What is networking? Network is an interconnection between your computers, between the devices. And that devices might be client computer, might be servers, might be the networking devices like a printer, scanner. You will have these all the devices connected together for what purpose that's that's the that's the data sharing concept and you how to have your data shared with with that other other colleagues your com, your company employee your friends your your uh, um, uh, uh, you know team members all over the 
all over the world when wherever they are sitting when when they need that data they want to have that data available and that is that is the possibility uh, that that is the only possibility when you have the lan they only you will have this possibility there uh, else you cannot go with this uh, data sharing without networking networking can be through cable or through wireless uh, network devices uh, cable that is called as lan and wireless network that is called as wifi network we will see that wireless also in this training course now why you need to have this networking uh, for easy data transfer for large file transfer you cannot transfer that files you know uh, continuously synchronization of that files from one computer to another computer you need to move the files continuously you know uh, in in a in a one day say two or three times you cannot move that to usb pen drive or usb external hard drive or uh, you know uh, you can't remove the computer hard drive and attach that in a say two or three times in one day so without networking you can't do that in networking you can have that computer that data transmitted from one computer to another computer and that's the that's the biggest benefit you will have this remote locations connected also so you if you have the branch office and head office concept you will get that, that get all the locations connected through that uh, networking softwares uh, uh you know uh, have you heard about this microsoft team uh, uh, do you know do, uh, do you know these words i don't know if you are using this slack or microsoft team do you know this this keywords guys yes that's good you know why because you need a team communication you need team communication and that team communication can be with, with uh, you know might be a simple chat message text message or might be voice over call you will just call someone on the on the uh, vip facility what that software provides you know instead of microsoft team in earlier days people are going to use that they they are, nowadays also a lot of people use that skype skype for business and skype but now microsoft have moved from this skype for business to microsoft team so microsoft team is getting popular but slack is also popular slack is open source and uh, not open source but it is free for uh, you know uh, up to some limit free for the team small team they they always go with this slack and uh, for larger team if those are those are a big fan of microsoft they go mostly with this microsoft team and such type of softwares are there but this this softwares will help you to get connected uh between different locations from one one uh, office to another office for data transmission for message message transmission you will use these softwares networking softwares you will use this sharing like hard drive sharing printer uh, different type of devices you can share with with your colleagues in that network environment you will have the uh, instant communication instant communication happen like like messages uh, through website or portal you can say email or chatting you want to send that in a in a you know offline message format or in a live chatting format or you want to share your desktop so for desktop sharing it's very popular software we use that in daily routine team weaver uh microsoft rdp is also really good uh what is that command ms tsc ms psc microsoft uh terminal server client so we use such type of softwares on the network for get that get that uh, you know uh, that operating system shared or that screen shared with other guys so that they can help you or you can help them in that in that uh, troubleshooting step you want to have the network uh, security maintain you know uh, that that is possible in the domain environment so uh, what is that security you want to have every user with a proper username password set you need to uh, control the access of those users uh, through the permissions in, uh, that is ntfs or file sharing permissions you will have the uh, access of uh, you know uh, different different settings uh, through that network will get applied uh, that is through the domain environment group policy so you will you will have to have these all the facilities without network it is not possible so in company in a large enterprise level environment networking is compulsory required so these are the most important benefits you know the most important one i can say i can remember that is for data sharing communication now what type of devices you need the media you need the devices like uh, you know uh, operating system first thing that is the software part so without operating system and nowadays every operating system including windows linux macintosh every operating system supports that networking uh, 
in, in earlier days when i was teaching this dos dos was not having core networking uh, facility available inside the operating system itself but uh, after after installing some components on the top of this dos that dos was providing the networking but now uh, networking is a default defective de standard in this latest operating system windows or linux operating system and macintosh also you need to have some hardware components like network card or also called a lan card to have that network card see uh, this is the network card and this network card you need to put on motherboard or uh, if you have that you know onboard network card that will be really good but without lan card you cannot connect this network cable uh, to your computer so you will you will just insert this network cable inside that network port and that port will help you to get connected that computer to the networking devices and that devices are like a switches and routers so what is the difference between switch and route we will see that also networking media will help you to get that network devices connected and this media can be you know uh, this media can be cable or can be uh, wi-fi signal so through this wi-fi signals i can connect this network card to my uh, to my wi-fi router wi-fi router will help me to get, send the data uh, with a, with a you know flexibility with a, with a mobility and I, I can move that device from one one room to another room or i can ca carry that from one location to another location where that wi-fi range is available that need that Wi-Fi routers are uh, providing support in that, that premises, in that environment, I will have the flexibility to move my devices. So that's the networking media, Wi-Fi signals. Not, not only the cable, but you will go with Wi-Fi uh, devices also. So uh, the mo mo most important core networking device is the switch. And you can see uh, I'm having a uh, image uh, in, in this uh, slide for Catalyst, Cisco Catalyst 29604 port switch. So this, this, these are the ports and these ports are, every port is got connected to one computer. So you will see here in my diagram, I'm having a switch and I'm having that switch got connected to the computer. You know, every computer is having that network cable connected through, uh, to that switch. So switch is a centralized device, which will help you to send and receive the data inside one LAN. So this is my local area network LAN. And I will have another LAN also. This LAN might be, you can say it's a department or might be a location like a city, you can say, or, or might be uh, like a building, you can say. So one network is one LAN and another network will be another LAN. So uh, th these networks can be in uh, one city or can be, but those these networks are far away from each other, say one kilometer or thousands kilometer. Then I can't connect these switches. So I need to go, you know, switches I can't connect directly. So what I need to do, I need to go and use the device called as router. Uh, what is router? Router is the device which provides me the WAN facility. So I will connect this LAN. This is my LAN. I will put the word here, LAN1, and this is my LAN2. I will just connect this LAN1 and LAN2 using this WAN link, and that WAN link will get provided by router. For simplicity reason, just see here, switch is the device which will help you to switch the data between the devices. So switch is local device which is the local device. So if I want to send the data from this computer to this computer, I will use the switch. So the meaning of switch is what? It, it switches the packet, it switches the information from one port to another port, from one location to, sorry, one device to another device, not in the location. So, but if I want to have, uh, if I want to have one different location connected to another different location, I need to go with router. Without router, it is not possible. It is not possible to connect two different LANs together. So I need to have the router also. Switch is the core component inside LAN. You will connect that switch to the router. And that router, you will see here, uh, this, this computer is not required. Actually, it is my proxy server. In many of the companies, they, they deployed that. But this proxy server or this software is not, this computer is not required. I will directly connect this switch to this router. And this router will get connected, might be to the internet provider. So I will have the ISP link connected and i will have one network connected to internet through that router without router i can't connect to the internet uh, to the isp link so router is required to send the packets outside of my company environment here is the router and you will see i'm having a uh, uh, image shown here cisco 1800 series router it's really common router in businesses in company environment routers are not having that many ports you will see uh, only few ports are there and you know uh, some routers are modular routers. I mean, you will you will have some some extra facility like maybe might be Vivo IP facility that card inserted there in that module, 
and that that card will provide you the extra facility like might be adsl uh, connectivity or might be van link connectivity or might be voip facility connected but router will have few ethernet ports available and that router is got connected to uh, through that port is got connected to your switches so i will have one switch connected here and i will have another switch connected here and maybe uh, if my van card is there i will connect that uh, to my isp link and that isp will provide me the internet connectivity see here at the topmost diagram i'm having one computer connected another computer connected to the switch this will be the switch and then this switch will get connected to a uh, internet through this router this will be my router and this will be my switch so i will have this type of diagram here i will have this type of layout here there are two companies more popular companies one is for you know it's de facto standard many many users go with that linksys wi-fi router so linksys is very popular for wi-fi routers so this is this is a image for wi-fi router i'm having another router shown here in this slide this is cisco 1800 series router this is for van link you know van link that is uh, uh, that is uh, uh, you know this router also provides can provide me uh, depends on my model can provide me the wi-fi facility but this router is fixed uh, internet connection or lease line router i can say so i will have that fixed connection added using that model to my uh, this 1800 series router and then router will send the data receive the data through that interface but this router can have the wi-fi facility also links is de facto standard many companies use that links is for wi-fi because the it's cost effective solution but cisco is the is the uh, you know costly devices cisco manufactured but those devices survive for many years so cisco is the standard for networking devices companies use the cisco devices everywhere uh, i i forgot to mention you here when you have only 24 port switches you know just see here imagine i can connect to one port one computer so i i I can't have more than 24 devices, more than 20, 22 devices connected to one switch. So what companies do, they put multiple switches there. They connect and, you know, maximum I can get in the market up to 48 port switch. I, I have seen that on, only up to 48 port switch. But maybe uh, I, I can connect this 48, one 48 port switch to another 48 port switch using a network cable. So I will just connect these two switches together and so that that switches will help me to this is my networking rack and in that networking rack i will have multiple switches added for my number of devices so how many devices you will have in company just say for example i'm having uh, 200 computers pcs and for this 200 computers i need to have these multiple switches connected with each other connected to each other and that that uh, all the computers goes and get connected to the switch and then switch is got connected to your one of the router your one of the router so this router is required for internet connectivity. What is the meaning of router? A router is doing a most important process. That process is called as routing. Routing is what? Routing is the is the method which which will get uh, used to uh, direct or you know divert your your packets from one location to another location. Say from one, my LAN to the internet connectivity to the van. So routing is the method. Routing uses different protocols behind the screen. So it's a little bit complicated to cover that routing protocols inside this training. But I suggest that if you want to learn this routing in detail, then you can go with the CCNA training. It's not that much popular nowadays. I was having CCNA a uh, few years back. I was conducting this training, this networking also, and the CCNA training also. And I was teaching that route, uh, routing process there. And I was uh, having that re OSPF, these are the protocols there. Uh, IG, uh, ISIS, IGRP. This, this was the protocols in those days in that CCNA training. That, that CCNA exam number was 64801. I was teaching that CCNA. And that CCNA is teaching these different protocols for to get that CCNA pass. You need to understand these protocols and configure these protocols on the router. Router is helping you to do that configuration. So why, why Cisco is popular? Because Cisco have invented these configuration-based routers. It's called as manageable routers. Other companies or routers are not having that, man, that much uh, configuration for, for getting that control of that hardware. Now, along with this router and switches, you need 
every device to have that network adapter nowadays if you go with uh, uh, with a you know a laptop or if you are purchasing a desktop motherboard then you will get an onboard network card also so onboard network card will help you to get that well, get that device directly connected to the switch without network card but onboard network card will be there and uh, that network card will uh, will have that small configuration on motherboard and that motherboard is having small chip and will have that network card that ethernet port provided there you will just put your cable network cable and this cable looks like this to that ethernet port so you don't need to add this type of extra network card this network card is pci express network card pci express is the standard is on the motherboard you will see the slot there and you will fit that network card this pci express network card on the motherboard and that motherboard will help you to get that network card packet transmitted you know from motherboard to the network card and from from network card to the switch so this network card will will help you to get the data data transmitted from that motherboard from that computer to the outside device and this network card will have ethernet port connected there this is the port where you will put this cable and this cable sometime called as rj45 cable also you know that also called as ethernet cable so ethernet is a standard we are using this ethernet standard in our company environment for this networking uh, there are different type of uh, uh, rj standards are available rj45 uh, is only the standard four or five cables got connected out of this uh, inside this this uh, computer networking environment so rj1 is there rj11 is there rj2 is there but that standards are got used by telecom companies uh, for voip or for telephone communication or for, for broadband connection only but we are using this rj45 connect connection or cable or this type of connectors with this cable this cable is also called a patch cable you might have seen that when you purchase a wi-fi router or when you uh, go and connect inside your company environment when you go and try to connect this laptop your laptop or desktop to that uh, networking environment then you need to have some a small cable say one meter or two meter cable that's also called a patch cable but that's a network cable and this network cable will go uh, go and have this network card connected to your computer you know network cable will help you to get this network card uh connected to the switch so this this cable will be between your computer this is this is my computer and this computer will have the network card and this cable goes there in that network card and then that cable at one what end one end that cable goes to your switch so this is actually the cable which connects that's the media you can say connects to the switch from that network card to that switch so you will have that cable you know cable length will be variable so how how far that computer uh, from your switch or from that network uh, network center or network uh, uh, control room that much big cable you need to you need to use and patch cable is small cable which will help you you know fixed type of cables company uh, laid down there but you will use this patch cable to connect from that fixed point to your laptop or to your desktop so these are the two different cables will get used there okay in short network adapter will help you to get your uh, get your computer connected to the networking environment and this cable will help you to connect this network adapter to your switch environment now without cable also you can connect to your network using this wi-fi network wi-fi network also called a wireless fidelity this uh, this wireless network or wi-fi network will help you to get your portability or you know mobility between your different type of devices i'm having mobile phone i'm having tablet i'm having laptop and then this uh, this wi-fi network will help me to send and receive the data to and from these devices this what what icon i am showing you that's the wi-fi router and also called a wap wireless access point this is what wireless access point or in general language we say wireless router this wireless router will help me to get this flexibility configured <coughs> you will see uh, i'm having the wireless devices also mentioned in next slide this is why a wireless access point also called as router hmm, from linksys you have the wireless network cards also to connect you know this type of network card is not required in your laptop why because laptop is providing that wireless network card built in every laptop nowadays is having that wireless network card provided i'm just checking my connectivity 
every laptop is having that that wireless network card provided but if you want to connect your desktop see this is my desktop and i want to connect this desktop to my uh, wireless router this is this is my wireless router and then how i will get this desktop device connected this is my desktop then i am having only the choice to have such type of wireless network card added in inside the pci express slot so this desktop device will have the wireless connectivity through this PCI Express network card and this network card will help me to get connected from that desktop or from that device fixed device to this wireless network. I can use, you know, nowadays, uh, you know, uh, the IT industry is getting small because they are they are going all the technologies using this USB devices. They are getting that connection through this USB port. Now you will see here, uh, I'm having uh, another Wi-Fi card, wireless network card. Uh, on the USB port, and this is this is one of the smallest device. You will see 802.11n. You know this is China-made device. You can you can get this device in 100 or 200 rupees in Indian currency, purchased from local local IT shop, or you can go over the Amazon or Flipkart or any website, and within 100 or 200 rupees, you can get this wireless network card device. And this uh, this device is uh, you need to insert this device in a wireless port and that device will have you know uh, built-in device drivers and it will automatically it's called a plug and play so that network card is plug and play and that network card will help you to get your wireless uh, uh, signal received to your laptop or desktop without uh, without this uh, uh, this uh, uh, pci slot uh, interface pci interface cards just one second i go i see some network issue on my another laptop just give me a second just one second okay it's back there yeah it's got connected on the on the wireless network card so it's a tablet actually i will show you and i mean in front of me another laptop to see your chat messages yeah this is my tablet and this tablet this tablet is having keyboard attached so uh, what you can say convertible device so this is got connected and this device is not having any USB port, you know, it's a tablet. So I need just has to get this wireless signal on this tablet through built in wireless network card. So that wireless network card is provided by the company, uh, Acer. Acer is having that network uh, facility provided as a, as a Wi-Fi network device. Okay. So these are the wireless devices, uh, hardware components. Now, let me show you what are the wireless standards available in market when you go and purchase you should go with the latest one 11g 11n 802.11n or 11ac it's not it's not that much common but you will see 54 mbps and 600 up to 600 mbps speed there megabit per second uh, please beware about this my dear friends when you, when we are downloading file we see that uh, if it is 1 mb see uh, uh, if you download these slides then it is 2 MB megabyte. But when I'm comparing this, this, this is the file size. If I'm talking PDF file, say hmm? this is file size. But when I'm talking about my bandwidth, I just need to write down this mega in bits, small b. Just see here, whenever you are talking about the bandwidth in the networking environment, that b is small. Why? Because it's a bit per second megabit or gigabit so how you will get the actual value you just have to divide this by eight so why why because eight bit equal to one byte so in real life we count that values in byte but in van link wherever you will see the bandwidth let me show you suppose if i'm testing my connection speed using this website it's a simple website uh just go on this uh, what is that speed test for example so when I'm testing my network bandwidth, let me change the server. Hmm. Let me test the bandwidth. Just to see the connectivity, then you will see the unit what this company is using. Let me zoom in in that and you will see that limit. That unit is megabit per second. What is megabit per second? That is that is bits per second. You know, that that is the bandwidth. So always, whenever we, uh, whenever we are talking about the bandwidth, we refer that bandwidth as bits per second. 
So actually, when I will divide this received value, you know, what is that? Say download speed. 82 Mbps is my download speed. Actually, company is giving me 100 Mbps. They are committing me 100 Mbps. But when I'm getting 82 Mbps download speed, uh, it's in megabit per second. Actually, when I will use some software like torrent or some file download software, if I'm using, I will get divided by eight value there. So my actual file download will be 10 Mbps per second, 10 megabyte per second, megabyte per second. So whenever you will see this bandwidth, bandwidth will be in megabit per second. This different standard use different frequencies. These two frequencies are free in all countries, 2.4 mega, uh, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Two frequencies are always free. Every company, uh, every country is having this reserve frequency. So your wireless network cards from, you know, manufactured in India under Make in India project or ma manufactured in China. They support this 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz frequency. So not only the network card, but the wireless access point Wi-Fi routers also support this 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz frequency. I suggest you to read this theory later on when you will get China. But always go with the latest standard. 11G is the de facto standard, but 11N is also getting popular because it supports more Mbps. So you should go with higher bandwidth when you are purchasing the wireless devices. This networking devices or networking industry is got controlled by some networking standards. And they, these are the three organizations which control worldwide the networking standard. One, one organization is the ISO organization. We will see this uh, in, in OSI model also. This ISO organization is having, you know, worldwide different countries have connected to this ISO organization. They agreed with this standard. And this ISO organization is setting that standard for networking card manufacturing companies for networking devices manufacturing companies and networking software also they are they are controlling the internet bandwidth also they are controlling through that standard that standard is got default uh, uh, is got agreed in different countries by different governments and different organizations those those organizations are related with computer networking either manufacturers or manufacturers of the devices or manufacturers of the operating system manufacturers of the software they agreed with these standards there is another uh, organization, American National Standard Institute. This is responsible for computer information technologies standard in the United States, mostly in uh, US only. So these standards, like uh, uh, you might have heard about this ANSI when we are talking about the code, character conversion, ANSI, ANSI or ASCII code. So that's the ANSI standard. And this ANSI mostly is related with US only. There is another organization which controls the uh, you know, manufacturing of uh, devices related with physical component, you can say, and that's the IEEE organization. IEEE is having different standards for uh, for networking uh, cables, for networking switches, but you know, IEEE is related with mostly with the hardware, hardware standards or hardware components. Uh, what should be the speed, what should be the bandwidth available. And IEEE, the full form is International Electrical and Electronic Engineers. That organization is maintaining the standard for electrical and electronic manufacturing uh, companies. Any question till this now, guys? Yes, Saurabh. Priyan, Sandeep. Hmm? Any question? Okay, let me have some water till that time. Okay. No worries. If you don't have questions, no worries. I will share at the end my email address. You can you can email me that later on. I will share my WhatsApp number also. You can WhatsApp me. You can get that question back to me. No worries. Now, uh, understanding the OSI model. These are the networking standards, and the standards are got defined. You know, got defined in a in a model. And what that model says. 
how the manufacturing companies need to manufacture their networking devices, how the operating system devices, how different different components in networking should communicate with that operating system, and how operating system should communicate with that ne different uh, different networking component like routers, which is all this all this all these different components need to agree with one standard, and that one standard is the OSI model. This one standard, this OSI model is a theoretical model, is conceptual blueprint, which is it's just like a guideline you can say for manufacturing companies, for for uh, operating system, for software companies, for software industry, you can say altogether. But uh, these this, uh, this different different concepts or these different guidelines are followed by them. Due to this uh, follow up, you know, these different components, different operating systems can communicate with different components uh, in the, you know, software to hardware also and software to software also. Means one software from one company, say email server from one company should communicate with another email server from another company because these two email servers, these two softwares are got developed using this OSI model guideline, using this OSI model guideline. I remember here when my when I was teaching Cisco CCNA, my students were asking why we need to understand this OSI model because this OSI model will help you to understand the networking. So this networking is got divided in different layers, and when you study that different layer, then uh, you know you you will understand that networking how that networking is working, how that network functionality is got got uh, completed. How the data will get transmitted that understanding will be clear when once you understand this osi model this osi model divides your network communication in small small layers and these layers are uh, seven layers total from top to bottom you will see the top number is layer number seven so bottom bottom layer will be layer number one and that layer number one is physical layer and topmost layer is application layer i will go on each and every layer but I'm just explaining you this layer numbers and the name of that layer. Application layer, presentation layer, session layer, session layer is fifth layer, transport layer, network layer, network layer is layer number three, and data link layer, that is layer number two. Layer number one is at the bottom. So when networking is happening there, from top, you are sending the data. Let me just go on here. I'm sending the data from host A to host B. Then my software, my application, say I'm using Outlook or Outlook Express. Mm -hmm. or something like a uh, like a slack i'm using or might be microsoft team uh, team client i'm using then that software works above this application layer and that software sends the data to application layer and then application layer pass that data to to the physical layer you know from different layers that data will get processed and once that physical layer will receive the data it will send that data to the to the networking devices uh, to the you know in the in electronic signal in that format and then that another computer at the other side will receive that zero and ones byte and bits and bytes you can say that electronic signals and then that physical physical layer from that computer will uh, just join all the zero and ones and pass that information to the application layer which is uh, which is running say might be email server for example say exchange server i'm running so to this exchange server i will have that data from my outlook client forwarded from host a to host b <clears throat> but this data flow <clears throat> will happen from application layer to the physical layer and at the receiving end from physical layer to the application layer back again to your server end or to other uh, you know uh, destination computer at, at that destination end so that's the way this data will get transmitted now we will see from top what is application layer application layer is the as the name says it provides an interface it provides a uh, provides a window to send and receive the data through your application so applications uh, like, like your you know windows based applications or macintosh based applications are are interacting with the application layer so the name application it provides window for user or application to access the networking service so your application say for example i'm using outlook outlook don't need to understand what type of network devices i'm using what type of switches i'm having what type of routers i'm having outlook is just connecting that uh, to the application layer and application layer will take care for the data transmission so it, it works above this application layer Application layer provides different protocols, end user protocols like FTP, SMTP, uh, that, that is the file transmission protocol or email trans email uh, data or you, you can say uh, something like a remote connectivity protocol or network connectivity, remote access servers for VPN access, you can say network connectivity or the WAN link, 
these all the things will get provided by application layer application layer will provide that through the ports and we will see that ports in next coming up slide but application layer provides the interface between your applications and the networking devices networking will get handled by the bottom layers application layer is just providing the communication channel between your application and the networking components now the layer number six presentation layer what the presentation layer is doing here it it converts the data you know it, it formats the data it controls the syntax and semantics it formats the data in the way uh, it decides the language of communication in the way uh, how that computers can understand so that data conversion is the main process this presentation layer handles so you know it decides how the data should get presented to the server or to the other end so that that computer can understand that you know that communication uh, that that language is got decided in the presentation there so presentation there is controlling the language of communication uh, might be something like encryption might be uh, encoding decoding you can say encryption decryption you can say uh, might be character format you can say that is the job of this presentation there uh, you can see uh, i'm having that theory mentioned character code conversion data compression compression decompression data encryption decryption these all the activities got handled by presentation there it uh, once that data is got received from application layer it does that formatting and it formats uh, it convert sorry uh, after after that format formatted data that that presentation layer will forward that data to the session layer session layer is the bottom layer below this presentation layer session layer will receive the data from this presentation layer after this data conversion or data encryption conversion or format format this session layer will receive that data session layer what is that session layer is layer number five and this session layer will maintain you know it first start the session what i can say initialize the session start the session then maintain the session this these are the activities these are the job roles of this layer start the session maintain the session and once that data will get uh, will get transmitted uh, transmitted very well so you know that's the uh, uh, that's the uh, that's the end activity you can say then this layer will go and terminate the session so terminate uh, the session will get terminated inside this session layer so it start uh, it, it take care for that it take care for main, uh, uh, starting the session maintaining the session once that data will get transmitted it will go and terminate the session also for data control for transmission this session layer is maintaining the session as the name says so session layer is really important for transmitting your data that's the fifth number layer and once that session layer will send that data from presentation layer to the session layer and from session layer then this data will get forwarded to the fourth number layer that is a transport layer transport layer will uh, will divide that data in the format called as segment what is that segment the data this is my data this data will get divided you know or you can say chunk of bytes it will get converted and that each each data format is called as segment so it handles the segmentation activity so one segment will have a small part of my data so your large data will get formatted in a small small segments and these segments are why this this is happening because these seg segments are easy to transmit over the network so you know instead of large big big one single packet small small packets will get formatted and that individual packet is called as segment segment segmentation is the ac main activity this transport layer handle and the, uh, along with this this transport layer provides two protocols there is at the transport layer level that's the tcp and udp protocol what is tcp protocol tcp protocol i am having a dedicated slide on this it's connection oriented product protocol so i will uh, i will make a connection and that connection will give me the guarantee you know that's that's the transport layer uh, trans uh, that, that's the transport layer activity you know uh, to maintain the session to get, give the guarantee while that data transmission will get completed properly uh, transmitted yes or no that's the transport layer uh, uh, activity that uh, uh, you know sometime when you are transmitting something like a live video live audio you don't need that type of guarantee you just need the speed you just want to have that data synchronization completed and data synchronization will happen through this uh, another protocol called as udp protocol 
uh, this TCP protocol is giving me the connection oriented sessions. It maintains the session. It generates the session. It helps you to synchronize the data properly after each and every packet or that segment transmitted. It sends the acknowledgement back to the to the sender. But in the UDP protocol, there is no acknowledgement. There is no connection uh, format set. And you know it's a connectionless protocol. You can say UDP protocol is connectionless protocol, and there is no guarantee that data will get transmitted. But there is a guarantee data will get synchronized over the time very well. So when you need something like a live streaming service, like live audio, live video, I will use the UDP protocol. Else, I will go with TCP. Normally, we always use TCP protocol for for our daily routine activities. But whenever I'm, I need something like a uh, to watch a live video like something say from YouTube channel I'm having a uh, broadcast or video video transmission completed then at that time I will go with the UDP protocol because I need speed without uh, without delay I want to see that video I want to listen that audio then at that time for live streaming services UDP is re is more preferred uh, protocol transport layer provides this TCP and UDP protocols there now after that data will get uh, received at this uh, transport layer that data will get formatted in the format called a segment you know sometimes this this concept segments or message also called a message uh, formatting the data in that format and that format is having the name called a segment this concept is also called a pdu protocol data unit of that layer of that layer so if i'm having a layer uh, say transport layer what is the pdu of this transport layer the P pdu of the transport layer is the segment so that transport layer generates segment so that is the protocol data unit of that layer so you need to go with transport layer and that layer generates the pdu or have the pdu and that pdu is the segment so pdu of transport layer is the segment when you go for interview or when you go for you know uh, some discussion on this networking you should remember pdu is the uh, is the measurement unit data data format you can say at that particular layer so pdu of your uh, of your transport layer is the segment now when that segment will get uh, will get uh, forwarded to the network layer that data is called got ca called you know that is the pdu of your of your network layer it is called a packet so that data is got converted in the packet format what is packet packet is the output of network layer network layer generates the packet and uh, let, let me draw that diagram see this is my segment and th inside this segment i'm having my data this segment is having my data and this segment will have some extra information added and that extra information is what that's the that's the ip address information of my computer so this is my source ip address and this is my destination ip address dip SIP and DIP here that information will get added you know and you know in in many cases I might have that segment with extra information added that's called a cyclic redundancy check or CRC check for for uh, uh, every packet you know that's the guarantee that CRC bit or byte will have that extra information added while in transmission that data should not get modified and that that verification bit is the CRC check cyclic redundancy check that type of information also added at the at the trailer part this is this is the header part this is the header part of my this is the header part of my packet and I will have that trailer part also this trailer part will have the CRC bit or uh, that that guarantee bit which, which will help me to identify in in transmission that data is did not get modified so this network layer will have the packet with this extra information ip address information and crc information this network layer is having another important component there that is the ip address and what is ip that is the internet protocol this new internet protocol information ip information is got added to that packet that is the ip address we will see this ip address in the next coming up uh, topic but now this information is really important so you are having the packet generated from the segment and that packet is having ip address information you know this ip address information will get used by your networking devices layer 3 devices are there and that devices are like a layer 3 switches or router so you will have the router uh, which reads this information which reads the ip address information of that every packet and it decides that where to send that packet from one land to another land only or from one land to over the internet 
So this uh, this packet will get identified based on the IP address, source IP address and destination IP address, and router will use that information to decide where to send this packet, where to route this packet outside of the LAN, outside of the uh, outside of one company environment to another location like uh, over the internet. Then this uh, this layer three devices will help you to do that activity. Layer three devices. The most common one is layer three switch or router. Router is very common in layer three network layer. Now that packet, once the network layer will have that packet generated, that packet will get for forwarded to the data link layer, and that data link layer is generating from that packet that is a PDU of your of your data link layer that is framed. So it will ju just go and get the frame generated from that packet. This packet, you know, this is my packet, and this packet will get add, will will have some some extra information added. And this process, you know, this extra information is what that is a MAC address, uh, a network card, physical address of that network card. This is the uh, address your network manufacturing company have burned in that network card. That's the physical identity of that network card all over the world. Every network card is having that unique address assigned. And that address is also called a media access controller address, MAC address in short. And this MAC address is got added to that packet. And you know, this process, which is having this extra information added, is wrapping this entire packet inside. Also, this process is called as encapsulation. I will I will show you this encapsulation in next summit, uh, next slide. I'm having that dedicated slide on this. But please remember at the data link layer, your packet is got encapsulated in the frame. So that layer two information, what the devices like a switches or bridges need that information, like where to send and to which device it should reach that layer two layer two device switch mostly. Bridges are outdated. Bridges is a is an old concept. Nowadays we are using switch. So that switches will have this extra information added, and that extra information is the MAC address. And from that MAC address, that switch will learn that where to send this packet inside the LAN only or to the router using this data link layer information. Data link layer information is got, you know, got formatted uh, for the layer two devices and layer two devices, mostly common devices, your switch. So switch will help you to send that that packet to either to the LAN, local LAN or to the Wi-Fi uh, to your layer three device that is the router. Now that packets, sorry, what what I said, frame. Yes, let me let me write down here. You got a segment at layer four transport layer. This segment is got converted in the packet format. This is at layer four. Packet at layer three, and this packet is got converted in the frame at layer two, and then this frame will get forwarded to layer one. Layer one will convert this frame, entire frame will get divided in a small, small chunk of bits. That is the base zero and one. So this frame is got divided in an electronic signal. So either one or off or on, one or zero, or, or you know, zero and one. Computer or electronic devices can understand zero and one only. So this frame, will get divided in this electronic signal. The devices like hub, network card, connector, cable, all are working in layer layer one. That is the physical layer. Hub is an old device. You know, nowadays no one is using hub. Now we are use, always using switches there. But using the hub technology only, switches got gen, uh, invented. So in the older days, when switch was not there on the earth, hub was very common. So hub is really old device it's not common no one can have that on the earth nowadays but you just need to know hub lan card and connectors as are the devices at the physical layer they are working so your data will get formatted in a different format and see here this is one slide where i i can show you how the data will get formatted your data in these three layers application presentation session layer will not get formatted so your data will be as it is no, without any format but once that data will reach to the transport layer, data is got converted in the format called a segment. What I said, these are the PDUs, protocol data units of that, that layer, specific layer. PDU of your transport layer is the segment. 
Okay, let me check my internet connectivity. Okay, so that's good. Now, what I'm discussing, the PDU. So transport layer is having the PDU called a segment. Segment will get converted when, once that, that information will reach to network layer, that segment will get converted in the packet. And once that packet will re reach to the data link layer, that is layer number two, you know, then that packet is got converted or encapsulated in the format called as frame. So that is the PDU of your uh, of your data link layer. And then frame will get converted in the bits, zero and one. And from host A, see here, this is my host A and this is host B, that zero and one, that electronic signals will get transmitted from one computer to another computer or the, or the networking uh, devices. You know, uh, this table is also really important. These are the PDUs of different layers. You should understand this for, for interview purpose, PDU of different layer. Mm. Uh, for, for your knowledge, I'm putting here, what protocols are what protocols are uh, working at what layer you will see general application layer protocols like ftp http https pop3 imap smtp this different protocol ssh telnet these protocols work at the application layer presentation layer is not having any protocol but it does the activity called as compression encryption encapsulation de-encapsulation de character format conversion that process is handled by presentation layer. Session layer is having an important activity, log on and log off. Session maintenance, session termination, session uh, you know initialization. These are all activities got handled by session layer. Transport layer is defining two important protocol, TCP and UDP protocol. On next slide, I'm going on that part. But TCP and UDP protocols are got defined at the transport layer. Network layer defines different protocols like IP, ICMP, Internet protocol, internet control message protocol, then ARP, RARP, that's the routing protocol that network layer defines. Data link layer is having different standards like 802.3, 803.5, uh, something. You know that these standards are for your networking devices like network card, switches, bridges, wireless access point, different, different IEEE standards are, will get used. You know, 802.11 standard is used for uh, wireless uh, network connectivity. That's got defined at the data link layer. You will see a network layer is having the one important device working there at the network layer, that is the router. So routers are working at the network layer. So whenever you will see routers there, you just have to uh, remember it's working at the network layer, layer number three. Network card switches, bridges, wireless access point are working at the data link layer. And physical layer is also having some physical devices like hub, patch panel, network cable, uh, RJ45 connectors. These all the things are working at the physical layer. Uh, physical layer is also having uh, 100 base T, 1000 uh, base, uh, base X, such type of standard there, which has which got defined as a switch uh, switch type or switch bandwidth, how much switch, how much fast switch you are having. Uh, that's the That's the... Uh, bandwidth unit you can say for the switches how much da data transmission uh, faster data transmission your devices can handle you will see uh, at the layer number seven uh, you know that's the gateway device working so routers are working at the layer number three gateways are uh, software gateways these are like a proxy servers you can say these are like a proxy servers you can say are working at the layer number seven and uh, where your applications are working, like uh, say something like Outlook, then that Outlook or your email servers, uh, let, let me put that, uh, what is that? Microsoft Exchange server or uh, email server from Linux, uh, Sendmail or uh, what is that? Dowcote, Postfix, these servers are working on all seven layers. These softwares or these servers are working on all, all they, they are consuming the services from all layers. They are working at the top of application layer, but application layer uses this all the remaining services from this remaining layer. So they are working at the topmost uh, topmost layer, you can say above that application layer, you can say. They are not working at any layer. They are working uh, on all seven layers, you can say. So just see uh, what is encapsulation. I'm having my data. You can see the encapsulation process, how that encapsulation hand get handled. I'm having my data as it is. No, no format formatting will be there. But transport layer divides that data in a small, small chunk of bytes. That bytes are called as segments. So I'm having that encapsulation of that data handled there as a segment generate there uh, at the transport layer. 
then the header network header and network trailer part will get added uh, in the packet format and that is at the network layer and then that packet will get divided in uh, uh, again in a frames and that frames will have some extra information added every frame will have a frame header and frame trailer part and that's the encapsulation process actually encapsulation is the process this data link layer is handling but you know other layers also does your data processing but your data processing is got handled from transport layer to the physical layer only this four layers one number two number three number and fourth number this application presentation and session layer is not doing any data transmission or data conversion format or you can say processing on the data will not get handled by this above three layers application seven number layer uh, six number layer that is presentation and session they do not do anything related with your data conversion or data data you know they don't do, do any processing on your data data will stay there as data only they, that data will not get converted in the networking format so that's the encapsulation process now uh, i'm talking at the transport layer transport layer was providing you the tcp and udp two important protocols and this uh, this table shows you the difference here tcp protocol is connection oriented protocol like for example web server whenever you are fetching a website say uh, i'm a user and i'm typing here say www.google.com and at that time that google server is sending the data once my session will get connected so you know google server will get, get the guarantee that data from that google will reach to your machine and your client will receive that data in in that specific format and that format is got decided by this tcp protocol once the session will get generated connected you can say so it is called a connection oriented protocol once that session will get connected then only that data transmission will get uh, will get completed so it is reliable it's connection oriented protocol you know data will get transmitted and will give the guarantee because this tcp protocol is having the backend technology called as acknowledge so you know using this acknowledge every packet what the what the uh, what the client and server is receive receiving client is sending and server is receive sorry client is uh, receiving and server is sending at that time the client is sending the acknowledgement back to the server i received this packet i did not receive this packet such type of acknowledgement such type of guarantee will get provided in the tcp protocol so normally in industry we are always using tcp along with ip protocol so tcp ip is very bigger combination it's a it's a suite of protocols you know like uh, you can say like microsoft office suite so in in that you are getting different different packages there like word excel powerpoint that's the tcp ip suite and tcp ip is a big protocol which are having small small protocols for that specific activity say for example i want to uh, i want to send and uh, receive the files then i will use the F F F F ftp protocol i want to send the email then i will use smtp protocol i want to receive the uh, email then i will use pop3 protocol i want to get uh, web server working then i will use http or https protocol these protocols are belonging to tcp only tcp ip suite only tcp ip is, is a big protocol which is having this small small protocols combined or covered together inside the tcp ip so tcp ip is very common udp is not not that much common over the internet because it is connectionless it's unreliable you know you for user datagram protocol actually but you will say you for unreliable it's, it's not guaranteed so you know in in udp when when packet will reach to the client client will not send any acknowledge uh, acknowledgement back to your server so server do not know if that packet reached to your client yes or no <coughs> that that's the that's the udp protocol udp do not acknowledge that each and every packet for this udp is lightweight <coughs> because it's not having that uh, connection set it's not giving the guarantee it's not sending the acknowledgement back to the back to the server so it's really common for the streaming services like streaming audio streaming video uh, we are using youtube youtube and uh, now this, this session also use it, uses that udp protocol why because it is live streaming session audio video will get live stream to you my, my desktop is got shared with you that's the live streaming and this uh, udp protocol is giving you that guarantee of data synchronization so whenever you want to synchronize the data at the speed of light, at, at the speed, what, what you uh, think, like 
audio and video should should match with each other you know when i'm i'm uh, talking my, my lip lip syncing should be there with my audio so that that type of guarantee should be there without any overload extra overload on the network on the bandwidth uh, on the server and the client without without that type of guarantee without that type of overload i want that data live stream then at that case udp protocol will get used in daily routine we normally do not use udp but for broadcasting we use udp there <clears throat> every every protocol will get identified in the tcp ip suite using these port numbers what is port number port number is is the extra information your computer will have on which port which service is working say for example i am having a web server working on port number 80 and you know my clients will get connected on port number 80 this is my my laptop user and this laptop user is sending that packet to my server this is my server and my server is running an application like iis for example a web server from microsoft and that uh, that iis is working on this 80 port you know what is port port is a communication channel between your operating system and the uh, and the server application server software that server software is sending that data to your client on that specific service port and that service port is got defined uh, from 0 to 65536 number of ports you know that's a huge number and uh, th there are some common numbers are also there you know we normally uh, specify that say from 1 to 1024 these are the commonly used ports common ports M many services uses that common port but above 1024 your client and server will send that they, that data you know that uh, agreement between the client and server will happen on these randomly assigned ports and these random ports are for servicing purpose these random ports will get used to send and receive the data to you to your client and server above 1024 port your server will send the data your client will receive that data and you know the the ports like uh, between this 1 to 1024 say for example 80 port will be always free for next client say one client is got uh, is sending the date uh, sending the request on port number 80 to my web server and that client will uh, will receive the data uh, for that request on above 1024 port uh, above 1024 port because i i need this for my web server this 80 port should be free for next client so that next client will will send the data will send the request on port number 80 my server is sending that data to the client to the request on randomly assigned port above 1024 so 1024 are randomly assigned ports and this port list is here in your directory you know just open your computer and go to this c drive let me show you this is my windows 10 enterprise edition i will go to windows i will just go to system 32 directory then i will go to what is that directory drivers and then i will go to the directory called as etc inside this i will see a file called as services sorry ah what is that yes services file yes they are having that different protocol network and localhost file also defined but if you open this file, this is just for documentation purpose. This is not related with any operating system service or operating system process. But for documentation purpose, Microsoft is having this file in this predefined format. First column is service name, second column is port number, then protocol of, of that port, that port number and protocol on which protocol that port number is got defined, and the alias or description of that, that uh, service and the comment of that service in the hash so this is a documentation purpose microsoft is having this one big file specified here under this directory this file is located in c column windows you will see the file name here on my slide uh, 21 that is the page number 21 and you will see the directory just open that file when you go for interview you might get a question on this what is the port number of ftp service what is the port number of ssh service what is the port number of smtp service so you just have a look on this file uh, inside this read the uh, read the important services whatever you can understand read that remember the port number you might get an interview question because you know uh, what interview uh, what interviewer will ask you that question there is no guarantee but you should be ready with this type of questions there so how many ports are there one computer can have 65536 number of ports ranging from 0 to 65535 and this is got defined by eni internet assigned number authority eni have decided this port number 
okay uh, any question till this time till this time any question guys yes you can ask me the question directly there you have mute unmute facility there just move your mouse or this video icon my, my video icon and then you can mute and unmute yourself you will see the red icons there by default everyone is on the mute you can ask me the question using voice facility or if you do not have a microphone if you do not have a headphone you can type that in the chat window also i'm having another laptop in front of me to see that text messages Hmm, any question guys? Okay, no worries. Till that time you can type that question in the chat window. I will share my email address and uh, contact number at the end so that you can send me that letter also. Now this is the information what I discussed with you. Uh, up to that uh, OSI model. Now there is next uh, networking model we need to understand that is the TCP model. TCP model is not that much common because it is based on the OSI model. It has the same concept there, but you need to know what are the layers, how many layers are there in the TCP model. TCP IP model got developed by Department of Defense, DOD. It's, uh, so for that reason, sometime it is also called as DOD model. Department of Defense, US military government department have defined this TCP IP model for uh, at the end of that second world war they decided to make a network environment which can survive after the after the uh, nuclear uh, nuclear uh, war also that, that data transmission should, should continue with that they are having that uh, intention in their mind so this DOD model is got defined it's also called as TCP IP model TCP model and they combine the functionalities of different layers together in few layers you will see in tcp ip model i am having only four four layers layer number one that is a network access layer they combine data link layer and physical layer actually these two layers are sending and receiving the data you know they are they are transmitting the data or the lan or the network switches and that uh, due to that reason they combine the functionality of these two layers in one layer called as network access so as the name says network access where the networking happens there that is the network access and this network layer layer number three from the osi model let me put the number one two three four five six seven from osi model one number and two number layers data link and physical layer combined together to make a network access and layer number three called as network layer in the osi model got renamed they renamed that to the uh, another word that is the internet layer where the networking is happening over the van link so this you know internet what is the internet internet means sending and receiving the data or the bigger network a connection between multiple networks so interconnected network that is the internet so they renamed that network that network layer to the internet and they did not rename the transport layer they kept that transport layer name as transport layer only but the number of that layer is got changed. Transport layer is th third number layer here. And they combine application, presentation, and session because I said that these three layers are not doing any data formatting. So the data will stay there as the data only. So they rename these all three layers combined together called as application layer. Application layer, as the word says, it's a, it's a single layer which is handling your application data. That data will not get processed or will not get formatted. See here, this is ninth table, and this table explains that all the things where that what type of data and what type of protocol is there in that layer. As if you compare this with your with your OSI model, that will be really easy to understand. So transport layer is having TCP, UDP, uh, RTP, that is real time protocol, and then application layer is having HTTP, Telnet, your email servers and DNS server, web server, database servers are working at that application layer using that specific protocol and port number every protocol uses different different port to give the service network access layer is having this ethernet standard different type of networking standards got defined ethernet token ring frame relay it's got defined in the network access layer how the networking will happen that is the physical network will happen that is a network access layer 
Now the next topic in our networking concept is the IP address. Without IP address, your computer will not connect with each other. So I will have one computer. See here, this is my laptop. And to this laptop, I will assign this IP address. This is my IP address, 1.102. And to another laptop, I will go there and I will assign another number, 192.168.1.103. Next number I will type. And this number is called as is called as IP address. These two devices got connected to the to the network using this switch. And what this number is called as? It's called an IP address. And this IP address is having, you know, this number is in the decimal format. So what I have written here, this is in decimal format. But actually, computer converts this decimal number in the binary format. You will see here, uh, just, just a, one example, 172, 16.254 is got converted to this binary format. Computer can understand only the binary language. So due to this, uh, this due to this conversion, this binary format will will get used uh, for data transmission. So computer will identify because computer can understand only zero and one. They are they are working at the binary language only. So that that decimal number we as a human can't remember. So we are using decimal format, and this decimal number is got converted to the binary format. So one number is eight uh, eight bits. You know, eight bit number. And that's also called a one byte, also called as, uh, you know, also called as octet. Octet. Yes, eight bit. Or one byte. So you will have here four octets. 32 bits, four into eight, four bytes, you can say. So this is my first octet, this is my second octet, this is my third octet, and this is my fourth octet. O octet means what? Eight bits. So you will have eight bits, eight bit, eight bits separated by this decimal dot. What is this? Sorry, yeah. This is decimal dot. This is this is the separator, and this separator will will ident will identify what portion of this uh, of this IP address belongs to host ID. So this separator will help you how many how many bits got used for network and how many bits got used for host. And this this uh, specification, you know, to identify this network bit and host identification value means what? Using this single number, this computer can identify. I am 102 computer on this network. So network part is called a network ID, and the computer number is called a host ID, host identification number and network identification number. By using along with this uh, with, along with this IP address. By using, we need to specify that it's called a subnet mask. So using subnet mask, let me go on the next slide. Using the subnet mask, this computer can identify which is my network ID and which is my host ID. Just see here for my same example, 192.168.1.102. I'm having subnet mask. It's also called as default subnet mask. We normally use default subnet mask, but you can customize this and you can you can make your own subnet mask also. And that subnet mask is called as customize. It's also called as subnet, subnetted IP. So that subnetted IP will have customized subnet mask. But I, if I'm going with default subnet mask, this binary and an or, you know, what I'm writing here, and and or operation. So calculation of this subnet mask and uh, and the ip address will handle by this and and or process to calculate the network id and the host id so that that goes in the decimal conversion format you know decimal to binary conversion format sorry so we are not going to learn that but just understand here using this subnet mask and this ip address i can identify what portion of my ip address belongs to network and what portion it's really simple how many zeros you are having that many that many octets got used for host id that many octets are got used for host id and how many 255s are there that part is my network id and i need to i can't write network id with a half portion just see here one one nine two one six eight one dot i can't write i i can leave this so i need to put at the end zero there to specify it's one nine two one six eight one dot zero it's like an area code you can say like, like our city code you can say and at that city you are having your house there house is your computer you know that is 102 device belongs to that city or belongs to that area and that area is the network id part is the network id part so you you will specify here at the end of that network id that many zeros 
how many zeros will be there it depends on how many host I, host bits are there host octets are there based on that and this will get uh, this will get calculated based on that subnet mask I, I will show you on the next next slide i am having a nice table on that uh, the default subnet mask uh, I will show you how many subnet ma masks are there and what are the defaults of net masks. I will go on that part. But let's see uh, different type of IP addresses, private IP addresses and public IP addresses. You know, this slide should, should say here private and public. Not only private, so IP address in type. So you will have the public IP address. The public IP address are got purchased from the ENA. ENA control this and these IPs are unique over the internet. So that's called as public IP. Public IPs are available to public over the internet. So it's called as public IP. Private IPs are private, or you can say for land use or local use, you know, land use. You don't need to purchase that public IP. So these IPs are inside your land, and these IPs are in different classes. You will see here, I'm having a private IP range free to use in your land. You don't need to purchase these IPs, so it is called as private IPs. You can use these IPs without any payment, without paying anything to your ISP. You are free to use this inside your company environment. And these are the different classes, and these classes are having that range for private use. For A class IP address, I'm having 10.0.0.1 IP to you know from from 10.0.0.1 to 10.255.255.254 how it will work let me draw that in here in the white space 10.0.0.1 is the first ip 10.0.0.2 will be second ip dot three like this dot four like this hmm? i will go up to 255 255 the last 255 is not allowed it's called as broadcast it's called as broadcast ip what is broadcast sending packet to every device it's called as broadcast one to many that's the communication channel one to many packets i want to send one from one device to many devices it's called as broadcasting and it's not allowed so this 255 is not allowed the last value i will receive here 254 so once this 254 will reach i need to go and increase this this third octet by one see here i will get the next ip 1.1 1.2 like this 1.254 then i will get 2.2.1 2 .2 series started so it's like a like a vehicle number series you can say once you register your two wheeler or four wheel four wheeler to your local registration authority rto authority they assign number plate to your vehicle in this format only so they, they go and increase the series they change the series by one digit and that's the way this IP addresses are got written. But you will, if you see in your company 10.IP, 10.IP, that is the A class, private IP. For B class, 172.16 to 172.31 is reserved. 172.16 to 172.31 is reserved. That's for small scale companies, you can say. Mid sized companies, not small scale, but mid sized enterprise level companies, up to 64,000 devices. There, if they are having in one location, they will go with this uh, B class. I I'm going on a nice table here on the next next screen. But if it is mid sized companies, they go with B class IP. And if they go, uh, if the company is too small, up to 100 or 200 devices they want to connect. Uh, or the switch network without router, then they will go with C class network. C class is having fixed value for private use, personal use, 192.168. Any value from there, 192.168 to 192.168.255.254. So 192.168 is reserved for small scale setup. So that is the C class IP. Now, for your understanding, I'm having an next page which is saying, how you will identify the classes and what is the default subnet mask this this table is really important table when you go for interview this table will help you to understand a lot of concepts very well when once you study this table you can understand how that tcp ip is working now how you will say this ip belongs to a class or b class i will define that a class or b class based on the first octet value of my ip let me write down my ip 192168 you know 1.102 in my earlier example i used this is the first octet value this 192 so if this 19 this first octet value belongs to 
zero to two six uh, zero to one twenty six range. That's the range from zero to one twenty six. Then it is A class, and if this first octet value is ranging from one twenty eight to one ninety one, it is B class. If it is ranging from one ninety two to two twenty twenty three, it is C class. We use in the production environment your Windows. On Linux or Macintosh operating system supports only these A, B, C classes. D class is reserved for multicasting. No one, no one can use for operating system assignment. It is specially reserved for some type of services like OS deployment in Microsoft Windows called as WDS role. Using uses this multicasting 224 to 239 series for first octet. And E class is reserved again for experimental use. The range for E class is 240 to 254, 255, the first octet value. I'm talking about the first octet value. So we cannot cannot use this D class and E class for your Windows, Linux, or Macintosh operating system. You have to go with A, B, or C class IP only. You cannot use D and E for your daily routine activity, especially reserved for uh, extra activities. Now, the default subnet mask, uh, th this first column says, First, first update value. Default subnet mask. I, I was talking about the subnet mask. Subnet mask defines what portion of my my IP address belongs to network part and what portion of that IP belongs to the host part. That is the default subnet mask. Subnet mask identify uh, help you to identify that. See, uh, the default subnet mask for A class network is two five five zero dot zero. For B class, two octets will get used for uh, for that B class specification. Uh, for network identification, see, uh, I have written that in A class, you are having a, a bigger network with many hosts there. And how many networks possible? 128 number of networks are possible from 1 to 126. From 1 to 126. 128 networks I'm having. Usable IPs are 16 million IPs every network. Say I'm having 128 number of networks and every network will have 16 million IPs. Valid IP range from first IP, you can say 0.0.1. .0 to 126.255.255.254 is the last IP I will receive in the A class IP range, A class IP. Private IP is reserved for free to use in your LAN in the A class is 10. I'm repeating that same values here from my earlier slide to just, just put that everything on one single page. So I said that this page number 26 is really important for you when you go for interview in IT industry for software development for networking for uh, IT admin job role you need to know this private IP range you need to know the valid IP how many computers you will receive how many networks you will receive how many bits got used for network ID and host ID this entire single page is having that every everything in one single table for B class you are having the network net, network bits two time used network octets two network octets are there and two octets are reserved for host you will receive you know because of that you are getting more network 16000 networks approximately you are receiving and every network will have around 65000 devices around 65000 devices and valid ip range first ip will start with 121 128.0.0.1 .0 .0 and the last IP will go up to 191.254. Yes, 255 is valid at the at the middle octets. In last, I can't use. Uh, at the last, it, it will call as broadcast IP. But in the middle, I can use that. And I will have this 255.255.254 as a last octet in my 191 network as a, as a last uh, digit of uh, decimal value for my 191 network. So from 128 to 191, that's the valid IP range. And private IP range for my B class for personal use is 172.16 to 172.31. So this is the valid range for my private internal use. Now for C class, you are receiving that first octet value from 192 to 223. You are having you know many networks. How many networks? Nearly. Uh, how many you can say 20 lakhs network uh, yes approximately 20 lakh network i will receive and each network i will have up to 254 computers 254 computer devices i can connect to each and every network so i will have you know small small but many networks available there so this is for small scale companies 
this is for mid scale companies you can say and this is for large organizations if they want to have say millions devices how many devices 16 million devices per network if they want to have they can go with a class network so it's up to you up to the decision makers what what class they will use one ip is not here in the first update that is 127 because 127 is uh, completely reserved 127 uh, you know first update value is completely reserved for loopback ip range so if i am having first ip 127.0.0.1 as loopback or also called as local host ip what about second ip it's also the loop loopback loop or local host if you try to ping on 127.0.0.1 your own own local computer is replying you back and same story with when you ping that's uh, with this second ip same computer is replying you back what what is that that's the local host or loopback address own computer will reply you back you can say self for self testing or some services like uh, iis server they use this 127 local host ip these are the networking troubleshooting commands and these commands are really important first command is for testing network i, I will put here the connectivity test connectivity i will use ping command test connection ping command the full form is packet internet gropper this is the tool Let, let's see a ping and i want to ping continuously so i will put the hyphen t there and a dot a dot n is my destination ip this ip can be any ip you can put your web server ip or your internal domain controller ip or dscp server ip whatever you are having inside company you can put that ip and that that reply from that computer will get received this command ping command will help you to get the network testing network communication checking you can say uh what is a dot a dot a dot a dot is the, is the ip address uh, belongs to google it's a google dns server public dns server of google they are having a dot a dot a dot eight and another one is a dot a dot four dot four there are some free open source uh, uh web servers uh open source dns servers also 80 80 80 80 80 80 yes multiple time 80 so that's the ip of open dns servers but a dot a dot it is belonging to google you can check your computer connectivity if that computer is got connected to the internet yes or no using this ping command there is another command to check the package delivery some some uh you know uh, let, let's check here if i'm uh checking that network connectivity let me zoom in i can see i got an error because many times the isps are blocking that command and that command is tracer command tracer command is checking the path trace root is the full form of this command tracer you just put the ip address you know sometimes isp block this command uh to they they don't want to reveal the ip addresses of their router but when you type tracer this will show you how the packet will get delivered from your location to next location so it shows you up to 30 hopes see here from my wi-fi router the packet is got delivered to another location that is another router and that router belongs to my isp many times many isp do not reveal that they will they will block they block that all the reset commands let me adjust the size you will see see how this is my broadband provider from where i'm running this internet connectivity that that routers ip addresses will get listed you know after after a few try maybe if isp is trying to block then i will get uh, the request time out there but tracer command is helping you to find the packet path this is the path what is that spelling uh, path finding how the packets will get delivered so from one network to another network one from one router to another router you will see here it's got completed within within eight hopes only one hope is what changing network is called as hope so hope is what from one network to another network see from my one computer to my wi-fi router is one hope from my one wi-fi router from my route router to another router which has got connected to my router directly that's the second hope so you will see how many how many hopes are there in the in the path now it reaches to my google dns server a dot a dot eight within this this path this is also this is this information is also helpful for me to troubleshoot the networking uh networking uh connectivity so this tracer will show me the path where the packet will get lost i can find using this tracer combining this ping and tracer together there is a new command microsoft have introduced this i remember 
this I got uh, first time I learned this in my Windows XP. Uh, uh, what is that certification? MCP certification. Yeah, Windows XP service pack to uh, Microsoft released that. And in that XP service pack to they released this command path ping. This is the combination of presert and uh, ping command. Uh, let, let me type here. Uh, I can put the name of my service also. Say, for example, certification guru dot org. That is doing the preset first. Okay, it it shows the IP address of that server. That is a web server, and it shows you that is the preset command. See here, this is my laptop. My, my laptop name is Manoj laptop, and this is the IP address of my laptop. From that laptop, the packets got delivered. That's my you can say zero number hope. And now, first hope is my Wi-Fi router having this 192.168.1.254 IP address assigned to my Wi-Fi router. And from there, the second hope is my ISP nearest router. That this my on-premises router is got connected to that nearest router. So this path ping is a combination of tracer. First, it is tracing, tracing the route, and then it's pinging. It shows me the statistic. So it's a combination of trace route and ping command. So the command is path ping command. It's really important command for uh, connecting, uh, for testing the connectivity between uh, uh, where, where the packet is got lost or how that internet is not working. You want to find that detailed information. This path ping command takes one or two minutes to get completed. Just wait for one or two minutes to see the output. And I will see a nice report here. Just wait. Let me check next command. IP config and NS lookup. Okay, just wait. Yeah, this is the normal behavior of this path ping command. It, it takes one or two minutes to keep that data calculated. Choose the statistic. See ya. Competing statistic for 175 sessions, seconds. Nearly two minutes, you can say. Three minutes. Okay. Okay. We'll leave that. No worries. I will. Uh, we will we'll put that on screen, and I will explain you what is IP config command. IP config command will help you to find the IP address details of your computer. Uh, if you run this IP config only, it shows you the current IP address. It will not show you other IP addresses of uh, other other devices or other important information like from which computer this computer is receiving the IP, that is the DSCP server information, what is the default gateway, what is the router IP address, what is the DNS server, that information will get provided when you run this IP config slash all. Slash all will give you the more details there. Slash all will give you the MAC address also of your computer. MAC address of your computer, that is a network card physical address. IP config slash all is to see more details simply ip con con config command ip config command will show you simple details not not the details like router ip address default gateway that is the router ip address dns server ip address mac address details so that's the extra information see ya i'm getting from ping command path ping command i'm getting nice diagram drawn it shows you the Shows the di very well defined diagrams here. Okay, so my packets from my laptop reach to this direction in this way, and where the packet is got lost, you can see a lost and same. Same hundred, there is no lost. Only one one percent is here <laughs> to the nearest router. So this this information will help me. Yeah, I need to troubleshoot this network only. I don't need to troubleshoot this network. So using this path ping, you know, it takes a lot of time, but this is really important information. Now I was talking about the IP config command, IP config. 
I think one thing will show me the network cards, you know, and my laptop, I'm having virtual software is also running like VMware, uh, VirtualBox and Hyper-V and a lot of things. So I'm, I got that type of network information, network card information also. But see, uh, my physical network card information, the first, what I got is the IP config, Windows IP configuration, Ethernet adapter, because I'm connecting that network cable, Cat5 cable to my Ethernet port. And I got 192.168.56.1 IP, IPv4 addresses, so-and-so, sublet mass is so-and-so, default gateway, so-and-so. I can see a lot of information here. I can see my wireless network card detail also. It just got disconnected. No IP got assigned. VMware network card also will get listed. And if I want to see more details, like default gateway and all that, I will put here all, slash all. It will list a lot of details. Let me go on one, say real check network card information. And I highlighted that. And now you will see, I got a MAC address also listed. My network card is getting IP from DSCP server. And I can see the DSCP server IP address also. What IP address I received at till what time from this time to this time, I can see default gateway that is router IP address. Server is also, my, my Wi-Fi router is having that DSCP service running. So that's the default gateway and that's the same DSCP server. And I can see the uh, DNS server IP address also. It's providing the DNS service also. That is the Wi-Fi router. But I can see more details using this IP config slash all command. Uh, IP config slash all will show you the MAC address also, but you will use another command called as get MAC to see the MAC address of your uh, network cards. So it just lists you the MAC addresses. So yeah, uh, my uh, network card, which is having this, uh, say, for example, I don't know what MAC address I'm having, but say, for example, this is my network card, which is got connected. You can see there on my IP config slash all real tech PCI 10 7 D. I am reading that MAC address here in my get at get MAC address command. Get MAC command. And I can see 10.7D is the MAC address of my Ethernet card. So other network cards, what I'm having it might be the Wi-Fi card, might be the virtual network cards added by VirtualBox, VMware, or other softwares. But this is the network card uh, MAC address of my device. Using get MAC, I can find that MAC address. And if I want to renew my IP address from DSCP, I will just use this D IP config slash re renew command. If I don't want to use that IP, I want to return that IP to my DSCP server, I will use this release parameter there, IP config slash release command to, uh, to return that IP back to my DSCP server. I can I can check my DNS, uh, DNS servers for troubleshooting purpose using this NS lookup command. NS lookup, and then I will type my domain name or I will type my server name. Say my server name is say, uh, this is my web server actually. I want to find the IP address of this server. Then I will type www my, my server name or my, might be my website domain name. And then I can see the address is registered. It has, uh, two IPv6 addresses and two IPv4 addresses also. So what is that? That is the name resolution process, NS lookup. NS lookup is helping you to troubleshoot your DNS issues. You will see, I got my FQDN. This is the name of my host name or name of my computer or name of my uh, web server converted to the DNS. So this is, this is really helpful for my DNS server testing, DNS server troubleshooting purpose. And this uh, host name or FQDN of my service or my server is got converted to the IP address. And if I want to, you know, I want to uh, do the reverse troubleshooting, I will just type NS lookup again. And then I will type the IP address of my, my server 28.28.137. I want to check which computer is having this IP address assigned. And I will see some records might does not have because might be that DNS server is not having that configuration configured or that setting configured. It's called a reverse lookup. This reverse lookup is the process where I will type the IP address in my NS lookup and then it shows me uh, what computer this IP address belongs to. You know, that's the reverse lookup. But NS lookup, name server lookup is helping me to troubleshoot the DNS connectivity issues. NS lookup is also important command for testing your networking uh, services, DNS service, for example. Now, here is the last topic of our 
today's session networking technology in which technology your network should work there are two technologies for small scale companies we always go with work group environment work group is up to 10 or 20 devices why i'm saying 10 minimum 10 devices you can manage very well but about 10 up to 20 you can manage with lot of frustration because why because it has no centralized authentication authorization no activity no domain controller required suitable for small network setup no server os required it is easy to implement easy to manage and implement but for small scale companies why it is difficult because every username password in that computer is got locally stored in that computer so this is really difficult for large organization for networking environment like your company setup for example you have to go with domain technology what is domain technology at other side if i go at the left uh, right hand at the right hand uh, list i will see support central authentication authorization what is authentication see here let me draw the diagram this is my switch network and to this switch network i'm having my laptop or desktop devices connected and people from my company they try to log in on these devices you know wherever they log in this user can log into this laptop or this user can log into this desktop this is my pc one suppose and this is my lap one uh, lap 21 say a device name lap 21 is the device name then you know when that person will log into this pc one in the work group environment i need to have that username password created inside this pc one this computer this operating system that's the local username password when that person will go on another device say lap 21 then at that device uh, that user need to uh, how to have that username password stored inside that local operating system so you know this is like a like a, a local username password database this is not going to work in a big environment so what companies are doing they are putting special servers there and that servers will have the database that's called as active directory do domain controllers that adcs database active directory domain controller services adcs database and that database will have the username password generated once say i'm having say 2000 users i will go and create that users i will set the passwords of that users i will maintain the username password i will i will keep that domain control healthy and happy i will have multiple domain controllers here this is my dc1 this is my dc2 i will have might be uh, another one also dc3 also i will have a bunch of servers domain controllers and that domain controllers will have that uh, that all the username passwords synchronized with each other and these all devices got connected to that domain controller means let me let me explain you the process if this user is trying to log in on this device that username password will get verified by this domain controller any one of the domain controller will verify yes username password is correct that process is called as authentication and authorization authentication is happening one time at the login time to verify that user is what that user is saying say by using the username password what that user is entering username password is valid yes or no that's called as authentication and you know once that user is got authenticated is uh, this domain controller will say okay signal to this uh, this computer and once that signal uh, that okay signal is received by that computer then that user will get login we'll see the desktop we'll see the we'll see the icons on the desktop we'll, we'll have that operating system or other software used wherever that that user will go and try to access something like a file server printer server or email server then that process is called an authorization what that user is having rights a permission set to if that user is uh, not having access of that permission that file server or that printer server will say sorry you can't access that that process is called as authorization authorization will happen again and again authentication is one time process at the time of login authentication happens authorization happens again and again uh, at, 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 at you know uh, at uh, every device level or every server access level say email server will do the authentication database server will do the authentic uh, uh, authorization sorry it's authorization i'm talking email server will do the authorization database server will do the authorization using this domain controller database so database server will go and ask to that uh, domain controller what this user is saying is that username password valid is that user uh, is is there that user exists there in the database if domain controller says okay yes that user exists there and then that domain that database server will go and check the permission 
what that user is having permission, read only permission, modify permission for that database, or have the access of that database, have the have the backup permission of that database. Then that that database server will send that permission, will allow that user to do that activity on that database server. So this is the permission verification process. Checking permission is the authorization. When you go for interview, my dear friends, please remember the difference between authentication and authorization. Authentication is one time process and authorization is again and again, this authorization is happening and this authorization is got handled by the resources, by the servers which are having that resources hosted. File server, DSCP server, DNS server, a database server, email server, they do this authorization authentication will get handled by domain controllers from the client computer to the domain controllers and authorization will get handled from the resources to the domain controllers once that resource will get the green signal will check the permission and will allow that user to have that uh, resource available yes or no based on that permission that user will get that uh, get that access of that resource so this is authentication authorization process this is exclusively available in domain technology in your workgroup environment, no central authentication or authorization is available. So workgroup environment is not suitable for, for large scale companies. They always go with centralized database. They always go with this domain controller concept. So why Microsoft Windows Server is getting popular? This is the reason because Microsoft Windows Server is having that domain controller concept, DC concept, Active Directory domain controller concept. Active Directory is a synonymous word for domain controller. Active Directory is the product name uh, what Microsoft is having for their Windows Server as a domain controller. So if you say domain controller, that is Active Directory de facto name from Microsoft. So Active Directory is your domain controller. The Actually, Microsoft has renamed this service name properly in this recent version of Windows, ADDS service. ADDS, Active Directory Domain Controller Service. ADDS is a, uh, is a proper, but in real life, we, we use short form, DC only, domain controller only. You need to put multiple domain controllers there. This is really good for big or enterprise level setup. Very well suited. Server voice is compulsory required without server voice. You cannot set the domain control technology. Little bit difficult to implement at the start. You know, you need to work hard to get this domain controller, to get this networking environment set very well using group policy, using permission, using different roles and different features. You need to go with this. Uh, domain, domain control technology, you know, that's hard for the initial step, but it will be easy to manage later on. Say after, after, after uh, one month, after six months, after one year, you will be, uh, you will have full control of your entire environment, domain environment in your hand through group policy, through security tools, through permissions, centralized permissions and all that. So that's the domain environment you you will store that everything in a domain control database centrally stored username password is got centrally stored in domain control we always have to go with domain technology what is recommended next after this training i suggest that go with mcsa microsoft certified uh that is solution associate you know on 2016 server i'm starting after after a few days after a few months i'm starting on windows 2019 also I will have that 2019 till that time Microsoft might release that uh, server certification on 2019, but I'm going to release my 2019 server training course. Also, you can join either 2016 server training. I'm having immediate batch. Uh, I think in next, next week, Sunday only batch I'm starting for 2016 server. And after two or three months, I don't know when, but after, after at least say two or three months, I will have 2019 server batch also starting. I request you to join this server training to understand this domain technology very well. Now, this is the summary uh, of our training course. These are 20 pages we covered. It's a small training, it's a one day session only. But you know, you understand the basic core networking concept here. The most important concept, what, what was uh, there, that is the OSI model. Uh, another one I, I taught you the TCP IP model, different layers, the networking devices. We discussed that what is the difference between switch, where that switch will get used, and where that outer will get used. Then uh, we covered the important topic that is the TCP IP addressing, TCP IP addressing, and the classes TCP IP A class, B class, C class. That IP address classes we understand, and we covered that uh, private IP and public IP, uh, that difference also we covered. And then we covered this. Uh, 
uh, troubleshooting commands and then uh, we taught uh, that domain and workgroup environment differences also any question guys whoever is there just share your questions here you having the voice access you can move your mouse over this video window my video window you can mute and unmute yourself you can directly ask me the question yes guys any question Why my servers are not available today? No worries, I'm having my server from another another location called as US. Okay, certificationguru.us is got hosted on another web server. It should work. We're having you can you can see here we are having total 14 websites. We are going to add more, and these are the websites we are having for every country. We are having websites now. So if one website is not available, you can go and try that another website. Okay, so here are my profile on any one of my website you can visit. It's the same website we are hosting on different web servers all over the world. And you can ping me, you can email me, you can WhatsApp me on this. You, you, can, you can call me also on that number. If you have any question, get back to me. I'm here always. I will be here for you, for your career. We are providing, you know, we are the owners. We conduct all these batches. We are not never going to uh, get any job or we are not leaving this field. We are always here for your help, for any any question, for any doubt related with server, related with programming, related with anything in IT industry. You just fire the question on my uh, WhatsApp number or, you, you know, we are having local numbers also. If you are belonging to different country, you can call me back on this number and these numbers are get forwarded on my local mobile. We are having that call forwarding enable on this number. These are the local numbers to save your money. We are having these local numbers from different countries. You can get back to me on these numbers also. No questions. I will give you one or two minutes. Okay, no worries. See you in the next training session. Hmm. You can check my course calendar page here for the next sessions or the for for the next courses. What I'm having, you can get back to me on this uh, number or email address for your doubts or questions, and you can uh, uh, check my. Up, upcoming batches there on this course calendar page. Thank you. Bye bye. And I will upload the recording uh, immediately today only. I will upload that in uh, late night. I will do the synchronization there in the Dropbox folder and I will share that on the email also. You can download right now. You can download through this Dropbox box, this Dropbox uh, link, uh, the notes only. And in the same folder, I will synchronize the recording. You just share the link. Uh, you just save the link. I will share that link again on the email, uh, on your registered email address. No worries. Thank you. Bye-bye. Enjoy the life in IT industry. See you in the next training session. Bye-bye.